Leptos 0.5 is out with some big changes. So let's start by taking a look at what changes I actually had to make in my real world application. You can see here that I've only got about six changes. In total, each commit roughly encapsulates a single kind of change. So to start out, I bumped everything to 0.5. Obviously, this is the 0.5 update. That includes Leptos, Leptos Axum, Leptos Meta, Leptos Router, any Leptos packages that you're using. And the first change we're looking at is potentially one of the biggest. It's something that I picked up on the very first time that I used Leptos. It's this CX variable, the scope that we have to pass around into everything. That is now gone from everything. <laughs> <laughs> so CX scope here in our server functions, CX scope here in our APIs, CX scope in any of our hooks, CX scope in the Leptos Axum redirects, CX scope in Leptos Axum, scope in children, scope in components, scope when creating signals, all of it's gone. You basically don't need to ever use this ever again. I'm super happy about this change. I think it's a great DX improvement. And for 99% of people, I don't think that they were managing scope manually. So I don't think that this will actually have an effect other than the removal of this CX scope variable. Change number two in our four components, the view is now named children. So any child components, instead of being passed into this view attribute can be passed into either a children attribute, or as we'll see later, this also opens us up to using just children and not having the additional syntactical noise of using this view macro. Again, great change, not really a refactor so much as a word replacement. And again, here I'm using the await component. Anything with bind as an attribute to bind to say a resource or something like that is now let. The logging macros, warn, error, info, log, all of that got moved into a separate logging submodule of Leptos. This is because when it exists in Leptos colon colon star, it conflicted with tracing and log and those other, you know, logging and tracing crates. So now if you want to keep using them, they're off in their own submodule, so you can still pull those in. A minor update to the Leptos Axum integration, generate route list is now not async anymore, so we don't have to await it. And the final change that I made, I didn't have to make this change, but the dot read API on resources is now deprecated. So I was getting some extra warnings and I chose to switch over now to dot get, which I just did with effectively a said find and replace on the entire code base. So again, not really a refactor necessary here, just replace one word with another word. So let's take a look at what's actually going on in this release. Scope is absolutely gone. We just saw that it's a wonderful change. Now the memory allocation for things that are related to scope is just happening behind the scenes. Now we, as users of Leptos don't have to pass around CX or scope variables anymore. Signal types can now implement serialize and deserialize directly. As a result of that, an entire file was removed from the to-do MVC example that dealt with serializing the to-do list into storage. This change, as you can see here, is anywhere you're using a scope in any capacity, just remove it. Now, the number two thing I'm really excited about in this release is the new experimental support for islands. Islands are something I first found out about when Greg, the maintainer and creator of Leptos, tweeted this demo out in mid-August. The experimental islands architecture allows an almost 80% of the WASM binary size reduction versus just, you know, a fully hydrated regular app that ships everything. So if we click into this demo, and remember, this is the demo from the tweet, so it's not the demo that might exist currently in the examples folder. I just wanted to see the running thing for the video. So in this case, for this demo, the Hacker News WASM file is 50 kilobytes over the wire and about 150 kilobytes total. That is very small. And if I clear the network here and click into some comments, you can see that page loads are shipping full new HTML. So islands means that your server ships HTML by default. And then for anything that requires interactivity, these islands of interactivity, that code will get compiled and shipped down. Now this is experimental. It does currently work. So go check it out if you want to. There is a PR 1660, that is the islands PR, so to speak. And it includes a lot of the sort of motivation and how to of using it. There's also an example in the examples directory of using islands with Axum. And it's the Hacker News example once again. There are currently drawbacks. These are things like children being completely opaque and Leptos router maybe not working for the use case that you need it to work for. But this is an experimental feature. It's one that I'm very excited about. It's one that I'm very excited to see happen. And it's one that I plan on exploring more deeply in a different video. I think this feature and how it works and how to work with it deserves a little bit more of a deep exploration. That brings us to static site generation, which is 
a little bit more grandiose than I think the actual feature is right here. This is basically static routes. So if you define a route that is static, then when that page is requested, it will render the HTML, do all the data fetching and whatnot, but it will never have to do that ever again. So this allows you to build out static HTML pages, either incrementally or all up front. Then your server will render that HTML once and never have to do it again. It basically is just permanently cached. Now, when I say that, a keen uh, eared viewer per se might go, hey, how do we control the caching for those pages? And that's one of the things that actually needs to be worked on. So cache and validation for these HTML pages, let's say your site itself actually builds out a set of static pages. The data doesn't change that much, but it will change in between deploys. How do you invalidate that page to get it to re-render that HTML every once in a while rather than never? Those are the major features of 0.5, but there are a lot of developer experience improvements as well. We can now spread attributes into elements and we can build components that use generic type arguments. In this case, we're not using that type really for anything. You can see it's a phantom data. If you don't understand what phantom data is, you can just completely ignore that and pretend that this is a component that accepts, I don't know, strings instead of integers for a particular display component. One feature that Leptos now has that other frameworks have already implemented is this called callback type. This callback type makes it easier to pass in or rather type the callbacks that you're passing in to your components. So instead of trying to do some generic, you know, function pointer type, you can do callback. First type argument is the arguments. Second type argument is the return type. And then you can pass in your closure and inside of the component that's using it, we can take render number. And if you're using nightly, you can just call it as a function. Or if you're not using nightly and you're unstable, it's dot call. Again, this already exists in frameworks like you. So it's really nice to see it come to Leptos as well. When dealing with a lot of signals, trying to create maybe a derived signal from a bunch of different signals, it can be annoying to go, you know, signal dot with, write a callback, signal dot with, write a callback, signal dot with, write a callback. So now there's a macro for this. You can say with these signals, use them. <laughs> Much nicer, honestly. There are new rustier interfaces for signal types, which means that instead of doing something like create signal, you could do read write signal colon colon new, which is very similar to the way that the rest of the Rust ecosystem works. When you're creating a new instance of some struct of some data structure, usually that is type colon colon new. And it's just nice to have this slightly more idiomatic approach. All arguments to server functions are now optional. So before I believe the only one that was still required is the name or the name of the type. Now that will get generated from the name of the function that you use. So in my case, I found myself uh, writing this in snake case and then rewriting it again in Pascal case over and over for all my server functions. This is a nice quality of life improvement here. One really interesting development here is that the Leptos Axum integration has been updated with the Axum JS fetch library, which allows it to run in Wasm in places like Dino Deploy. Now, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to use this, but it is very cool that it works. And there is a demo app inside of the examples folder that you can go find and run if you want to. I think for my use cases, I'll probably stick to deploying native code on something like fly.io. But if for some reason you have to deploy on Dino Deploy, you can now apparently deploy Leptos inside of the Wasm environment inside of that Edge JS runtime. Couple more minor breaking changes, some of which we already covered when I checked out the commits earlier. Generate route list in Leptos Axum is no longer async. So that's just a removal of 108. The view prop on the four component is now renamed to children, which means that not only can we just rename it like we have right here and like I showed before, but you can also use that new let binding instead of the bind word and just pass in children. So now we have less syntactic noise. So we don't need to duplicate this view macro, one on the outside, one on the inside. And we can say this view macro on the outside for component, each data key for each item, call it data for each item, render a paragraph with the data inside of it. Much nicer, very happy to see this. There are a bunch of other changes. Some of them are still breaking, but most of them I found to not be that impactful. All the changes that I had to make to my application were word replacements, which is really nice to see in a point upgrade. And remember we're pre 1.0, so we should expect breaking changes in every minor patch update or not minor patch update, every minor update. So 0.4 to 0.5 should have some breaking changes, 0.5 to 0.6 will as well, and so on. I'm super excited about the removal of scope. I am super excited about the potential for islands and we'll explore that a little bit more in another video. If you're at QCon SF this week, I'm giving a talk, so come say hi. And otherwise, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.